Next up, we have Dave Lorenzini. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're switching it up on me. With your BC Heavy Berman? Beerman. Beerman, sorry about that. No so, did you have a uh, PhD? Can we, should we call you Dr. Heavy? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> the Heavy's fine. The BC's fine. Okay. Okay, thank you for your patience. I'm gonna move quickly through these slides because we're, we're lacking in time. Um, I've been struggling with a little bit of laryngitis, so, so bear with me. Um, I'm part of Heavy Projects. I founded Heavy Projects along with Ian Maring. Uh, Republic is a collaborative project uh, between the Heavy Projects and the public ad campaign in New York City. Um, I wanna acknowledge my colleagues Ian Maring and Jordan Seiler, a founder of the public ad campaign uh, who I get to, to work with and they creatively inspire me. So <clears throat> briefly, I'm going to talk about urban spaces, AR, art, and architecture, and I think I'm the urban part of this urban and architecture panel. So let me move quickly. Republic is a creative collaboration, as I mentioned, between heavy and public ad campaign. We've evolved from a shared interest in democratizing access to public space. And this is, I'm trying to make this bigger. It's a little better. Okay. Uh, we've asked the sort of a key question for us is how can technology provide access to private citizens and artists who typically cannot alter or afford commercial billboard space. We're dedicated to using emerging media and emerging technologies, and AR in particular, uh, to alter the media environment. Public media environment is generally dictated by property ownership, ability to pay for its usage, and a willingness to break the law. As such, Republic seeks to blur private property boundaries using AR allow private citizens and artists to make incursions in the public space uh, in, in ways that we were physically unable to do. You know what, I'm gonna switch to it as a straight PDF. This is too small. If you scroll down on the page on the lower corner, there's a full screen on it. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's not letting me get out of this. There we go. Okay, much better. All right, so we've created a Republic application that should be available uh, in September on Android and iOS. Our first project was in 2011 in New York, uh, where we resurfaced or, or took over, in a sense, uh, advertising space in Times Square. Uh, this example that you're seeing here is Ron English's Breathe over a, I think it's Cowboys and Aliens ad in, in, in Times Square. So our first foray into the space was ad takeovers. Uh, this is another example of our ad takeover using a street artist, his name is Poster Boy. The, you're seeing the digital layover, what's underneath that is actually a Harry Potter ad. So it's, this is, in this case, is a form of culture jamming. If you're familiar with uh, Willow, that's Beck. Uh, this is in 2012 in December at Art Basel. This is in the Woodward Walls section of, of Miami. Um, this is a piece that, that we did over a Hawa Naza mural. Our piece is called Deconstructed. It allows you to sort of interact with the mural, touch it, pull it apart. Here's a screenshot. You can see the elements of the mural sort of deconstructing, and then if you see the full animation, they put themselves back together again. Uh, this is what we call Z-Space. 
this allows you to walk actually through the mural. You can walk underneath her legs and sort of into the mural space and Z space. So you can see the real mural in the background and then the screenshot's a little bit better example of, of what we've created in the AR space. It's interactive and immersive in the sense that you can go into the mural. Uh, this is a Ryan McGinnis mural. He actually went to a strip club in Miami, painted a bunch of strippers. I think it's a good excuse for painting this mural, I guess, at least on his part. And <clears throat> then painted his mural, I guess, the, as an inspiration. I call it loss of essence. We made it look like the, the paint is sort of pouring out of the mural. And it's sort of uh, our nod to Dr. Strangelove. I'll let you sort of fill in the blanks on that. Uh, another deployment that we have is called Resurrections, and this is where we create digital archives in situ um, of murals that are no longer there. So this is the Bowery Wall in New York that's painted mono every six months to a year, something like that. That's the Holland Naza mural. That's no longer there. Uh, and then you're seeing in the AR space the original 1982 Keith Haring mural. Uh, since then, there's been many murals painted, and on the app, you can sort of gesture swipe through the history of the murals uh, and see them in the space. This is a similar deployment, also in, uh, in Miami, uh, at, at Wynwood. This is the, what you're seeing in the background is the recent Shepherd Ferry that he painted in memorial to Tony Goldman, who passed in the fall. Uh, and then you're seeing in the AR space, the mural that, his mural that used to live there. And this is similar, but a little bit different. This is a new art in Norway. And you, what you're seeing is a degraded swoon wheat paste. Uh, and if you've known anything about Norway, if you've visited there, it's super rainy. So a lot of the wheat paste get degraded. You can see a little bit left over on the wall, but then you can see it sort of born again uh, in AR. All right. so. We're also using buildings and architecture itself uh, as the canvas to allow artists to make incursions into spaces where they wouldn't have been able to do so before. So we worked with Momo on this one, and we converted his 2D shapes to 3D, and we put them on the Williamsburg Art Design Building in, in Brooklyn. And then this is in LA, the Bradbury Building. Uh, this is a little bit different style deployment. Instead of creating the shapes and projecting them off the building, we created a 3D model of the building and projected the shapes onto the model. So it's, in a sense, a form of projection mapping in, in the AR. Uh, so you have to recreate the building in AR in 3D and then project the map or the, the, the image, in this case, the art, onto that structure. Uh, another version of this using buildings is, is reskinning them. So with that same building in LA, if you're familiar with Blade Runner, uh, most of the interior shots were, were filmed there. Do you know the toy makers, his sort of strange apartment with his toys and so forth, were filmed in, in uh, the Bradbury. Uh, so what we did is sort of recreated a, a Bradbury, sorry, a Blade Runner-esque version of what the Bla Bradbury could look like in the future. So reskinning this building with a future design, or it could be a, a retro design. Uh, but AR allows us, to, and certainly architects, to, to re-envision re buildings before spending a ton of cash. Uh, this is recently at South by Southwest. We work with uh, IEEE uh, and created a, a pixel wall around the Driscoll Hotel uh, in Austin. Uh, and this one is interactive, so it's sort of designed with the IEEE assets and, and open stand, and you touch the sphere and it breaks down the digital pixel wall that surrounds the hotel. Another screenshot, the sphere sort of swells and grows and interacts with the pixels in physics, and then it reveals these banners, and then the, sort of this new structure emerges with the open stand uh, standards. All right, so putting some of these uh, deployments together, we created, actually my colleague Ian Marion created this amazing Photoshop composite image of, of cities from around the world. Um, the, the original goal was to have a uh, 20 foot by eight foot wall built here in, this, in the convention center. Uh, it looks like we're gonna do that next year. So this year is more of an advertisement for this deployment for next year. And we're seeing this as a, an open development or a canvas for open development for anybody who wants to de develop AR for the city spaces. 
um, types of AR uh, that could be developed for this large composite. Practical information, train schedules, way signage, store information, historical details about buildings, interesting facts, architectural information like volumetrics, massing, redesigns and sun exposures, urban planning, traffic flows, new modes of transport, and then sort of more our, our domain is art, 3D, uh, public art, and spatially relevant art. Some of the stuff that we developed just as a as sort of a, a template or an example of what could be done for this large composite image, uh, hopefully for next year, uh, and people can develop on any platform uh, that uses feature tracking. Uh, so train information, uh, building relevant information, art and design. Uh, so you'll see the Bradbury there on the right and also the Bowery Wall on the far right with the original Keith Haring mural there. There's a little 3D model. I'm a big Blade Runner fan, if you can't tell by now. Uh, it's a little, anyway. I, I try and teach Blade Runner to my students, and nobody, they'll hate it. But so I'm, I'm, getting, I'm officially getting old. So you see the little Blade Runner police car there at the bottom, and then you see a movie texture of the film itself where that car sort of rises from the city, so you can touch that little car, and it sort of rises and flies away. You can see it flying through the, the city. Exciting. Uh, the Berlin Wall with a movie texture of the fall of the wall. The Pearl Paint Store in New York. Paint flows out of the, wall, uh, out of the store. Uh, we've created a subway. So we, we've, in this case, we've overlaid art uh, over ads. That's kind of our thing. Um, you know, the, sort of the legal battle of, of art and ads and ads over ads and so forth. Uh, the lawyers can figure that out later. And I think there's a panel on that next. Uh, 3D projections off of ads, so you actually increase your, I don't want to say ad space, but you, you increase your space of, of information into 3D, right? So you have multiple sides in which you can put information, in this case it's our ugly faces. Concluding remarks. We believe, and we're sort of in this for the ideological causes, uh, and we see AR as a sort of a, a tool for us to, to play out and build our, our uh, incursions in the public space, which we're very interested in. Um, but we see it as vital to the health of the city that its inhabitants can participate in some meaningful way in the visual urban messaging systems that surround them. AR provides a way for private artists and citizens to participate in messaging in public, mostly urban spaces in ways that have been generally dictated by commercial interests. It's very expensive to get billboard space. Uh, in a city like Los Angeles, it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Most people can't afford that. It is our hope that these early entrants will help create experiences that consider art and design as an important part of the way the public adopts this technology. So it, we think it's important to see other versions of what can appear in the digital layover. Uh, it seems like advertising has already started to quickly fill that space. Whether it's outdoor ads, murals, or entire buildings, the public seeks to continue to deploy AR to alter the current expectations. Uh, of urban media and accomplishing a core mission of reimagining public space. So, thank you very much. Move on to the next contestant. Thank you.